Welcome to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Earth, the Chief Architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. We support experts in living well and doing good around the world. Predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, coaches, all kinds of experts who are lifting others up and we have one with us here today. Her name is Amanda Gazzola. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the Dynamo Show. So honored to be here. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> let's get right into it. Let's talk a little bit about the journey. Before we get into the business of Amanda, let's talk about the path on the way up. Maybe some of the challenges you went through as a young person. Oh, totally. Yeah. Growing up, I, it was a huge mental struggle for me. I really dealt with a lot of self-confidence issues, self-esteem, just didn't really know my true identity. Mm -hmm. And I, like the more I started diving into figuring out what was wrong, I feel like now I have my full understanding. It, just like with a bunch of moving when we were younger, trying to fit in and with other people kids and whatnot and then on top of that having braces in grade three so because I me and my sister were playing and uh, I went around a corner she went around a corner and we knocked heads and then I oh, ended up no. having a black too so yeah. that and my tooth ended up coming all the way up at the top of my mouth so and then you know kids are pointing out at that and yeah, then you realize kids are mean yeah then you realize like oh man that like you start getting then that's where I started seeing that I started becoming more closed okay reserved so, yeah. yeah, and then, you know, growing up, you're hitting puberty, so a lot of stuff's happening. Um, mm -hmm. And now I understand that all, but I didn't understand it then. So my journey started when I was young, and I just didn't really start figuring that out until um, going to a girlfriend's party and realizing I was hiding behind a towel and didn't even go to the pool because I was that ashamed. And oh, really? at that yeah, time, yeah. I was young, 20 pounds heavier, and I'm short, so mm -hmm. I hold that weight a lot more around in my mm -hmm. tummy so that was when I started seeing that I needed to start making a change and I didn't know how to do that mm -hmm. so that my journey has been since I was young and I just I know 20s and 30s and now I'm starting to feel that whole beautifulness of my self-worth and self-confidence now and I want to teach other women that I love it so that's it's awesome all, it's all lifestyle. women empowerment yes hundred yeah. percent. very good it's mm -hmm. amazing how you know when we go through those challenging times in our teens how much they shape us now totally. you know and then we understand now that life is for us and not to us oh my god that, i totally wanted right? to bring that up today exactly yeah. that's that quote right there because that is when that was one of the triggers that i realized that it was it, the life's happening t to us not for us so we can make the choice now if you were to like look back then comparative to what you're doing now did you know that you were going into this industry not about at all. health and beauty and no, you know, but I not, maybe I subconsciously did because yeah. I did go to school for aesthetics, so that beauty right there. And then, like, I wanted to do something more because I wanted to change. My, I since I wanted to change myself so much, I didn't know mm -hmm. how to. But I knew subconsciously, I guess the steps because the next thing I wanted to do, I started went into fitness competition. Nice. And I was hooked with Very that cool. because I like I felt. 
Um, it was with the UFE. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, Very cool. uh, Ultimate Fitness Events. I'm doing my next show uh, this year coming up. So it's like as a 45-year young man, I thought, you know what, I'm going to step back on stage again. With, with what yeah. organization? Uh, the IDFA. Nice. Yeah. I used to own one. I used to own Fitness Star International. Yeah. Seriously, yeah, wow. I sold it That's to the, so the new cool. owners, yes. right? So I fell in love with the industry because of what it did for totally. others and that discipline it took to get to that level drug free. Right? right? And not many people, like, everyone thinks it's more superficial, but everyone's oh, yeah. there to help each other. In totally. The end. Yeah, totally. And they, we all like our And it's about health. Yeah, you knowing know? each other's Those journey. industries, those yes. particular organizations are about health, which is great. Yeah. Totally. Well, congratulations well, to you. So that's a big step coming from, you know, having the tooth knocked out and braces to being on stage in a bikini. Right? You know? Well, it's and that's like the thing. You had to prove step. to yourself, like, that you can do it. And that's when I learned about dedication and motivation. Mm -hmm. And you're hooked because nutrition. you're hooked on and mm -hmm. nutrition on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, you're hooked because you love that feeling and you want to share it with other people. Do you have any inspirational role models? I have a few, yeah. yeah. Uh, my, my biggest one, which helped change my life, um, was Tony Robbins. Okay, why? I really, really adore him. Yeah. I think that he has, he just, he had the right mentality and I started listening. And now I like, I love Bob Proctor. I love, there's my business coach, Colin Sprake. And nice. Yeah. So you're into all of them. A little oh, bit here, you learn from so many of them. Totally. Yeah. And th yeah those any are spiritual really entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurs, Any, well, or spiritual authors, or authors. I do like. I'm gonna. I don't want to botch his name, but Deepak Chopra. You got it right. Yes, yeah, I yeah. really adore I'm him. I'm reading the soul of leadership right now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna be friends. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've been in personal development for a long time now, and I'm moving into this new stage of purposeful development where you know we get to a certain level in our life where we've had the toys we've done the travel yeah. you know and now we're looking for something deeper deeper connection to the universe a deeper connection to ourselves if you were to talk a little bit about your legacy or where you're heading purposefully you know which which direction are you going in i I don't know. Everything. I don't even want to say it keeps changing every day. I just feel much more stronger every day with like where I want to go. So if I wanted to leave something, is I want to teach women and I want to be on stage, like I told you, um, to let them know that when they start accepting themselves for who they are mm -hmm. and start stop turning, looking at their curses and. Or sorry, I don't want to botch that. But they're changing their curses into blessings and realize that things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. That they are going to be much more of a role model to themselves, to other people, and to their family, to whoever is the like their most significant and important people in their life. Mm -hmm. So I really want to share people because I felt like everything was always happening to me, but mm -hmm. it's really not that case. And now mm -hmm. I can share that because I have that feeling and I so stand strong behind it that they can do that. So. Was there an aha moment for Amanda? Was it yeah. this bright shining light that said, hey, time to change? Totally. Um, I was two years ago, um, I left my job full time to start working for myself. Uh, I was working for my father's company mm -hmm. um, and he, he's, he does great at his job. It's just my, that wasn't the environment for me because mm -hmm. I'm a very upbeat person and I need that energy and yeah. that's just, I know that's who I've always been. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to um, the well, Wellness Business Summit and that was there that I learned that what an entrepreneur is. That changed awesome. my life big time and I always wondered what was wrong with me because I've had a few a few many jobs meaning over 20 and I could never stick with one and it's because I re realized You're and it's passionate not a, about it. Yeah, I'm unemployable and I don't mean that negatively I mean that very positively mm -hmm. meaning I learned because we learned that at the Wellness Business Summit and it's because I've always felt a connection working for myself. I feel like I do I want to do what I want to do because mm -hmm. I feel like I have an understanding and a connection with people and I don't feel like I could live that way or work for someone else to That's do right. what they do. Yeah. I want to do it for myself because I am my own person. And by know. doing so, you're doing it for others. You're being yes. that inspirational role model, that beacon of light for women, you know, maybe men too. Men too, um, more so women, but men too, because I, I do believe that everyone has a different type of personality. So one that will connect with me, I can, I'll definitely connect with them. And I just, I am a very connected person when it comes to people. I love feeling and listening to what they have to say. So why did you decide to join like health and beauty into your business? Um, it's just how. I guess it's just what I said to you at the beginning is uh, growing up, I didn't feel beautiful, I didn't feel healthy, and it was just internally and externally. I've now, 
Um, I know what it takes mm -hmm. and it is with yourself. It's just letting go of that past and letting it, I let that shape me into thinking that who that I was. So I feel that I can teach women how to feel beautiful, feel confident, feel the worth that they're looking for. I love it. So those are really great results. You know, most women strive for that in one way or another, and sometimes they just don't have that roadmap. So it's great to have a coach. Obviously, you have a coach. I have a coach. Totally. You know, and believe in mentorship. You know, I think that's 100%. the first step to really put your trust and faith faith into a mentor. Totally. Now, do you give back at all? Are you giving back in any way, shape, or form, or paying it forward? Yeah, so I volunteer with an organization called Make Your Mark, and it's a bunch of entrepreneurs that uh, come in and are looking for that guidance, and it's with my business coach, Colin Sprake. Nice. So I volunteer my time when he Very comes cool. here, and, and just because what it did for me, I, I continuously want to give back that way, and I'm so excited because I know what they're in for, and I want to just share that with oh, them. And like, amazing. I don't know. I'm called like their door angel, and it's because like, like I'm like give the high fives as they come I'm like you're gonna uh, love this like, awesome so. awesome and how do they find you how do our viewers actually find you um, well they can go to my website nice. uh, Um I have all my information on there and you can connect with me on Instagram um, my same Amanda Gazzola and uh, Facebook Beautiful. <laughs> all the same name I love it I love it I love it well thank you so so thank much for so coming much. on the Dynamo show it's an thank honor you. to finally meet you oh, I'm sure here. you're gonna do some pretty big things oh definitely Amanda Gazzola here on the Dynamo show I am your host James Ert and we will see you right after this short commercial break Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert, and I am sitting here with another expert today on Japan Walla. My man. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for coming on the Dynamo Show. I'm excited to be here. Okay, well, let's get right into it. Let's, let's talk it. a little bit about the journey. Before we get into, you know, the business of insurance, and I know you do a lot of work with businesses and some individuals, et cetera, mm -hmm. we'll get into that. I'd love to know about the journey. Tell us a little bit about maybe the younger years, some of your school and some of the challenges you went through. Okay, so when I was younger, if I, if you were to go back in a time machine, mm -hmm. let's say about two years ago, okay, you would never see me here. Okay. Um, naturally, I was a really shy guy in front of in public. Okay. I would consider myself an introvert. Okay. Um, I would I never would, have guessed. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you know what? It took baby steps yes. to build the confidence mm -hmm. and kind of put yourself out there. Yeah. So well, congratulations. Welcome to thank TV you. Thank and you. six million viewers. <laughs> yeah. Well, hi to everybody. So yeah. No it, pressure. It, <laughs> <laughs> so um, it came by step by step. I was always the shy guy at the party. If I'm with my group of friends who I know them, hey, it's all good. I'll be open, just mm -hmm. like how you and I are now. Yeah. Uh, however, if I walked in a room and I didn't know anybody, yeah, I would not be talking to anyone. I'd just be. Chill. Pulling out my phone, just sitting there on Facebook, okay. finding out what's happening, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, however, as things progressed, and slowly but steadily, I started to make small, small changes, and uh, I started building the confidence and, you know, trying to get over the little hump. Was that something you diligently drove towards, or was it just something that it was a natural evolution as you got into more business yeah. and around more people, I guess, yeah. the business of people? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, I, that's exactly it. I, uh, it wasn't like something I woke up sort of like one morning and said, this is it, I'm going to be an outspoken individual. Mm -hmm. um, however, in my progression through my career, mm -hmm. it started to require what I wanted in my life mm -hmm. was to be able to work at my own time yeah. or to be able so to the go. the flexibility. The flexibility. Schedule. I wanted to go out and meet individuals because yeah. having the conversation with somebody is a really great aspect about being a business insurance broker. Yeah. So in order for me to get out, in order to be able to be that somebody who can go out and meet individuals, mm -hmm. I had to be able to develop that self to be able to go out, That's right. pick up the phone and do a cold call and Introduce myself. That's right. And so That's it's nerve wracking sort of, for people that haven't done that before. Right. It, it is, but you know what? Anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. That's, uh, that's it. Uh, that's 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 I can put my, I can put my life on that. That if yeah. I'm able to do it, so can you. 
Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. Do you have any inspirations? Do you follow any sort of like personal development people or any authors that you love? Yeah, I, uh, I right now I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. Oh, I love Gary. So yeah, Gary's been good to me. He's 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 entertaining. Yeah. He's a, he's a true showman of the sport, and I truly enjoy him. There are others. Who I believe there's a lot of individual gurus mm -hmm. and speakers and motivational speakers, and I believe they all have a little golden nugget yeah. to offer. And uh, each one has their own specific skills. I think skills. he has a nugget in every sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and one of the best things he shared on one of his podcasts, and I highly recommend people to go uh, check out his podcast. Yeah. I think it's called The Gary V Experience. Yeah. Um, what he said to me that really clicked was time is finite. And that yes. he doesn't, he mentioned something about turning 65, 75, 85 years old and looking back and saying, you know, you know, regretting mm -hmm. that you didn't do it. Yeah. You know, the fear of, you know, the fear of regret or the fear of missing right. out. Um, and that triggered me and I said, listen, I want to be successful. I want to mm -hmm. be wealthy. I want to go out on TV. I want to be, you know, some, uh, a person who's courageous. Mm -hmm. So I gotta start making the do, start taking the baby steps to get mm -hmm. myself out there. What I like about Gary too is there's no polishing. It's just like it's raw, <laughs> yeah. right? It's just straight up. You know what's on his mind. He's gonna say it. Yeah. You know what, what, what's that one saying? Uh, uh, ready, fire, aim. Yeah. Right. It's just like don't figure it out later kind of thing. Just get it out there. Yeah. And uh, we actually have a very special relationship because Gary Vaynerchuk was the first donor to a charity that I just started called the Reviver Rejuvenation Ranch for at-risk kids. That is amazing. So he donated $50,000 US to my charity. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, so pretty cool. So special, special man. I'm, I'm really yeah. happy you yeah. en enjoy his inspiration. I he's, do too. He's, he's entertaining yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was there any big like aha moments? Like what made you get into this industry? It's, um, if once I started to kind of take my baby steps and I uh, wanted to, I was doing the nine to five, I was doing the corporate world. Okay. And um, What were you doing if you don't mind me asking? I, oh, I'm a commercial insurance broker. Yeah. So originally when before, I started before. off. Before, No, before I started off was I graduated college with the intention of becoming a lawyer. Okay, I okay. completed my paralegal studies yeah. and my intention was go become one of those suits guys. Yeah, really know? exciting stuff. Yeah, so that, that's what the plan was. Yeah. I graduated. And I said, okay, I'm ready to work at a law firm. Yeah. At that time, a couple of years ago, if you wanted to be working as a paralegal, most of the times you had to be, um, you had to create your own job. Yeah. And that kind of scared me at being 22 years old, graduating, fresh out of college and starting, give, starting to give people legal advice. I didn't feel comfortable at it. Okay, okay. And then I started applying to different jobs and I ended up becoming, uh, uh, my father, I, I wasn't successful with landing any jobs in the financial industry. Mm -hmm. So my father said, listen, why don't you go try out insurance? Mm -hmm. And I started it. I got a job as, um, as a sales agent. So somebody you call for your home and auto quote. Yeah. Um, I was one of those guys. Okay. Who knows, I might have even spoken to many of your viewers there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I started off there and then I worked my way to an underwriter of the files yeah. and last but not least I realized that you know what the nine to five is good mm -hmm. but it's not for me and good. I wanted to go out I, I prefer working if I have to work nine to nine mm -hmm. and you know be in the in the, be in the organization of sales mm -hmm. is something that really inspires me I like the drive I like the mm -hmm. hustle yeah. out of it closing the deal closing the deal opening you know? the relationship exactly exactly yeah. it has its own special it's not for everybody but mm -hmm. if you want it you can you can build the skill sets to it and once I realized what I wanted, that was that aha moment. Mm -hmm. That, okay, I want to get out. It's important. I want to be the guy who's out, out, out and about. I want to be the guy who's busy helping people with their businesses, uh, helping them protect it and you know, building that relation. It has its own. Has and now you're doing meeting. it. Look at you. Yeah, yeah, look yeah, at I'm, you. I'm, and now, I'm, now you're on TV <laughs> and you're you're doing your working your dream. Now I know you're you're big into insuring businesses. I know yes. you do people too. But let's talk yeah. about the businesses because that's a completely different animal, right? Mm, yeah. So being an entrepreneur, focusing on businesses, what would you say are the big differences between insuring like an actual business with a mm. bunch of employees, etc., right. or an individual? Well, you know what? It's a great it's a great question. Um, I don't believe there's a big difference. Okay. And, and the reason I say this is a business is an entity. Yeah. Most people believe that when you're dealing, doing business to business, yeah. there's this term business to B2B or B2C. B2B. Even right. if you're dealing with business, you're still dealing with an individual or a bunch of individuals in the business That's right. who have to know you, like you, and trust you yep. to buy from you. Yep. So 
you have to be, when you're going out to meet an individual who needs help with their home and auto policy, or, or you're going to a business who, or a gentleman who wants to, get, or you know, a lady, or let me rephrase that, when you're going out to meet the owner of the business, and you're still meeting that person. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, I, I personally think there's a common uh, thread for sure. Yeah, it, it's a really common thread on that aspect that you know you should you have to realize that you have to earn their earn their respect for them to be able to buy your product or well, your service. There's a decision maker in a exactly. business that's going to make the the ultimate decision for exactly. the entire business. Exactly. Now, do you give back at all? Are you doing any sort of like paying it forward or giving back to charity? What's close and dear Absolutely. to your heart? There's there's I, I, what I I feel that. There's so many great charities in Toronto. Yeah. Um, all, especially in the GTA. And what I like to do is that every different month I rotate oh, between nice. di different charities. Very cool. And one piece of advice I have for p entrepreneurs or business owners is if you're starting up and you have a charity or a cause that's close to your home, go out and reach out to that c cause and let mm -hmm. them know that you want to partner up with them. Mm -hmm. Because they'd be looking for people to, you know, they want to be able to generate their generate uh, donations, mm -hmm. and Awareness. it's a great it's a great social response social kickback yeah. as well. I love it. I love it. Where do you see yourself in let's say five years? What's on doing? I hope to be busier. Okay. And that's my goal right now. Busier Is, or more successful, or both? I think. I think you have to be, in order to get successful, you have to get productive. Is the word I should be productive. looking for? Working smart or working hard? I'm smartly working harder. Is that how it goes? For 12 hours or 14? I probably like Gary Vaynerchuk. <laughs> he's, he's at it for 18. like 16, 16, 18 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every day. You know what? He loves it though. Yeah. He, I, I call it plurk, yeah. play work. Play work. It, it doesn't feel like you're working. You yeah. know, I, I do a very similar style of day to Gary. Yeah. However, different, of course. Yeah. Just, just, I don't call it hustling. I call it flow. Flow. I like that. Okay. Just plurking and flow. Go, right. Going with the movement. That's it. On. My man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me. Here we are with On Japanwala. I am James Ert. This is the Dynamo Show, and stay tuned for our next guest. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Erd, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur, a brand that supports leaders in living well and doing good around the world. And sometimes we get some really, really special leaders, and we have one of them here today. She is a fellow TV personality, and I have Tamara Lopez here. Hello, my dear. Hi, how are how you? How are you? I'm good. Good, good, good. I'm thank good. you so, so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you very much yeah. for having me. I'm completely honored. Likewise. It's actually really different being the uh, interviewee, side. I guess, as yeah, opposed yeah, to being yeah. the host. So this is actually a really new experience for me. Very cool, very yeah. cool. I love it. Well, you have to share with me later how I did. Oh, totally. <laughs> as I critique you secretly. <laughs> that's it, that's it. So let's get into Tamara, okay? okay? Who is Tamara Lopez? Maybe we'll talk a little bit about the journey. You know, how did you get here? Let's talk a little bit about the challenges, maybe some of the schooling in the younger years, et cetera. Okay, sure. Well, yeah. we're going to go like way back, way, way back. back here. Way back. Uh, I used to, I was bitten, I think, by the act acting bug when I was probably the age of four. Okay. And I was like, oh, you know, mother, I want to be an actor. And I just like had this big personality. And she's like, sure, what a great idea. I mean, she followed me on that dream as I did school plays for several years in elementary school and in high school. Drama club. And obviously in the drama club too, took drama when I was in high school. And then nice. tried to get an agent and had these really expensive overpriced headshots and then it went nowhere. <laughs> and eventually, I mean, like, like any parent, there comes a time where if they don't see the progression, mm -hmm. maybe it's time to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand like why my mother had to do it. There's like obviously very expensive yeah. to go to these acting classes and stuff. Yeah. And the time to find yourself to go to auditions. And so, mm -hmm we made a decision that maybe I should get, as she called it, a real job. Oh. So once I had to give up on that, and it was very sad because it, it, it's an, an innate passion that I have. It's mm -hmm. performing and acting what age and speaking. Was when she probably just made the decision, I would, would have been in my late teens. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Because now came post-secondary education. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, you can't run off to Hollywood. I was mm -hmm. like, well, why not? 
Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else can. Yeah. The answer was no dice, and she mm -hmm. was not funding that idea. So it was university, and that's where I ended up going. And so I put acting and that whole dream. What did you take in university? Well, as a matter of fact, I went to uh, University of Windsor. Uh, I graduated there okay. uh, with an honors degree in psychology. But initially, I went there for the performing arts program. Mm -hmm. I ended up in the drama class, and I took uh, many courses that weren't really pertaining to acting because I didn't get in the Bachelor of Fine Arts program, for example. Okay. Like, it's okay. very competitive, yeah, just like is. even in real life with acting and auditioning. Yeah. It's so competitive. And Crazy they, competitive. Exactly. So yeah. if you don't have, like, exactly what they're looking for, then you end yeah. up in, like, the relegated uh, yeah. regular drama course. Disturbing. Course. Yeah, so I got to design mm. stages and I got to watch costumes. That's kind of cool. Interesting, for sure, but I don't Still draw. Part of the industry. So I remember the one thing I tried to draw a set, yeah. and the person's like, they would have fallen through and died. Uh, oh, God. I was like, I didn't say I could draw. I said I was an actor. Yeah. No one's listening to me. <laughs> so I ended up switching out into a psychology program, and it's funny yeah. because that actually came into That's play drama later too. on. It did. Well, the way that you have to <laughs> totally manipulate it and play with people when you have like yeah. an actual degree and kind of what I do. You're dealing for more with drama versus delivering it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what it is. But it's very fascinating how like the mind works and how people are. Yeah. So I was really happy I switched into that program. That's what I ended up graduating with. Nice. Did uh, you use it? You know, I actually I did. Uh, okay. In my full time job, I kind of do use psychology on a day to day basis. Yeah. I yeah. work for. Uh, the G, yeah. and I actually ended up teaching psychology an intro course yep. at a post-secondary school here in Ontario for okay. several semesters. Cool. Which was great because if I didn't have that psychology degree, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. So were, it's funny. Were how you in sports and stuff too, or were you just mostly focused on like drama class? And so it looks like I'm designed for sports. It's quite funny. Everyone's like, "Oh, do you play basketball because you're tall? Do you play this because you have broad shoulders?" The answer is no dice. I'm so. Uh, Awkward when it comes to playing sports. I think because I'm left-handed, I'm mm -hmm. a southpaw. Mm -hmm. So normally, I I tried out for every single team, never <laughs> made it. I was always like, I'll be on the bench, coach. <laughs> so instead, I because again, I'm a really good talker. So I tell myself, I went into more student governance instead. So I was on student okay. council when I was Great. in high school. I did the morning announcement, so everyone recognizes me for that voice that I have. Yeah, and yeah. be like, good morning, everyone, and That's now here today's announcements. So I did that, and then when I went to university. Same thing. Mm -hmm. I ended up acting in a few plays there. Nice. I also did a radio show for okay. our student council because I sat on student council for several years. Nice. Um, so I'd have guests that would come on and we'd talk about what's going on in student politics, mm -hmm. what do you want to see the university do, things mm -hmm. that we would do to advance the student body. Yep. Uh, we would hold rallies and I'd Any be there with my or? megaphone all the time, old oh, student rights and student rights and okay, things like okay. that, like when it yeah. came to raising tuition. Obviously that's yeah. a big deal yeah. when there's no money and school's already expensive. So mm -hmm. I would rally for things like student rights and... That's cool. A little bit of lowering, activism. Lowering tuition. But definitely it was more trying to get people involved. I was a mascot for the university for at one point. Too. Okay. What was uh, the mascot? It's called the Lancer. So we're the University of Windsor. They are the Lancer. So I wore the Lancer, Lancer costume. Okay. And even when I was in high school, yeah. I wore a costume for the city of Mississauga. Lancer, this like is, a medieval knight, like Lancer? Kind uh, of kind thing? of. Yes, yeah. it is with the, with the with jousting this, stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kind of reminds me of a Spartan almost. Okay. And okay. the one for the city of Mississauga would yeah. have been... I'm not sure how long um, or how long ago you remember this. It was Mr. Saga. That was the name of the millennial mascot. And that was the costume. I actually created the job for myself. And I use that in my talks when I say, look, if the opportunity isn't there, create it for yourself. Uh -huh. So they had a contest if you can draw the mascot. So I emailed them saying, hi, I don't draw, but I can <laughs> act. So I will wear the costume. And ironically enough, they called me like, no one wants to wear it, did you? And that's how I created a job. Mr. So I, Saga? I was Mr. Saga with my giant top hat and spats and big globe face. Oh, it was the best. Me oh, and wow. the mayor, Hazel, were like this at one point. I would love to see a picture of Mr. Saga. Yeah, I, I, might, I can dig one up for you. I will. That'd be great. It was. And it, Very cool. But again, that's more of me being out there and being the acting portion of me. Born and raised where? Actually in North York, and then Mississauga okay. for okay. Uh, a time period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The majority of my time was in, in Mississauga. Yeah, I love Mississauga. It's, it's evolving awesome. evolving quickly, eh? It did. It evolved out of nowhere. And I mean, yeah. I remember I, when you used to is. go <laughs> take piano lessons at Square One. Yeah. And it was not what it is today. Yeah. Huge difference. Wow, the condos going up over there, the real estate. It's but crazy. that's what that's what changes and how the place evolves. And even though they yeah. have City Hall, there's a square yeah. where you can't even drive over it. Yeah. There's a section there. And that wasn't there when no. I was Mr. Sog and we used to have our big huge and It's busy now. They New every Z weekend day. something different, you know. It's great what Which they do nice. for the people over there. It brings the community yeah. together. Different cultural events want. and stuff like that. Bringing oh, the groups together in a very centralized location. 
makes you feel like part of the family because, again, Mississauga has ex evolved totally. population-wise. Does Tamara have any inspirational role models, per se? Like Oprah any? Winfrey. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it, yeah. Yes, Oprah, yeah, yeah. and she has, like, her Soul Sundays. Yeah. She has her books yeah. that... Uh, things I would tell myself, and I, I like to read her magazines. And she has a lot of inspirational people that she mm -hmm. talks to and that she'll interview. As a matter of fact, when Oprah was here mm -hmm. several years ago, mm -hmm. down that at the Tony Metro. Show? Was that the one, the Metro? Yes, at the Metro yeah. Convention Center. I, I believe there. it was in 2012 or something. Yeah. So was I. Yeah. High five. Yeah. High five, High five man. I was totally there. <laughs> uh, it was, I went and I bought a ticket. No one else wanted to go. And I was like, no, I have to. If, if I can't even meet her, it's just to be in the same room with her because she is, yeah. Inspired, like for example, Anything not just like touches, black women and like women in general, but many people she brings together mm -hmm. through what she has to say. And now with own, exactly. So yeah. when I went there, I was actually in super nosebleeds because there was over eight thousand people. Yeah, super nosebleed, yeah. binoculars and telescopes to see where Oprah was. And as a matter of fact, luck would have it, they were closing my section of nosebleed, and they're like, "Can you come with us?" Because the front section wasn't sold out and they wanted to fill the holes. So when they did the pen well, from the front stage, <laughs> are you kidding me? I'm I ended kidding. up being in second row <gasps> oh, from the stage when my nice. nosebleed oh, was the, row oh. like 800. Yeah. All of a sudden they go, come with us everyone. So I was thinking, are you kidding? So I went all the way up to second row and then when she came out, the room just Erupted. exploded. Yeah, oh, Deepak yeah. Chopra was there. and it's another uh, level, eh? It is, just she is. Level. Yeah. Our, our, our modern day Mother Teresa, in my opinion, like just the, what she does for people and oh, the yeah. lives that she's changed. And especially when she started coming out with her real story, you yes. know, like late in her career, like yes. the truth of everything. It was like, I just, such admiration for her. Totally yeah. mind blowing. Even watching yeah. her in the color purple. Oh, yeah. There, she has so many different levels and different hats that she puts on. So she can be an actor, she's an activist, she's a great TV host. And you kind of aspire to be someone like that, very well-rounded, but also very grounded as an individual and still sending out your message. Where do you see Tamara in five years? That's the next Oprah Winfrey movie. Hello. You know, right, <laughs> the Toronto version. It'd you have nice her here first on the Dynamo <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping to be able to do that. I mean, by uh, touching individuals, by sharing my own story oh, yeah. and encouraging them to pursue their passion. And just lifting everybody up, man. Exactly. I love it, selflessly. That's what you do. And I tell people when I do like one talk that women should, and then they have the tendency to want to bring each other down. I'm like, no, you do better when you raise each other 100%. up. Like and tracks like. Exactly. We're not trying to compete. We're trying to progress together. Truth. Right? <laughs> we have the truth here on the Dynamo Show. Do we ever? And Tamara Lopez. And we will be back with more Tamara right after this short commercial break. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert, and I am sitting here with the one and only Tamara Lopez. hey -o. Hello, hello. <laughs> I see you brought something here. What is this little funky little oh, thingamajig? I actually brought you a little gifty, if you could imagine, because oh, you no. called me. and Not I, me. Yes, and I have kind of like creeped you on Facebook, and I see what you do and all the amazing things that you're involved with. Oh. So I'm like, you're kind of like a rock star. So <laughs> I thought I'd get you oh, a rock no. star. It actually says rock it star. It does. It does. I'm not even sure if you can play guitar or not, but I do now. Well, there you go. <laughs> That'll totally look good with the motorcycle. So. I love it. Rock it star. Good with our little trophy here. There you go. Another the, the trophy. The million to add. dollar club. <laughs> 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 thank you so much. Hey, you're I'm welcome. Genuinely grateful for that. I'm grateful for being here too. So thank you. You're very welcome. So let's talk about you being a professional volunteer. A professional volunteer. <laughs> very good phrase I came up with because if there is something to be involved in, in uh, then you will find me being involved in it. And Mother okay. makes fun of me all the time because she's like, how do you find the time to even sleep? I volunteer for the Canadian Cancer Society uh, Halton Region Branch. I volunteer for the University of Windsor Board of Directors for the Alumni Association. Still. I was part of my condo corporation nice. as president. Nice. I volunteer for the Canadian Emergency Services Boxing Association. Cool. I also do plays with a group called Brightside Players. Nice. I also do volunteer for the Halton Industry Education Council. So if there's something there, I want to be a part. My hand's always the first one to go up. That's I want to awesome. be there because That's it's a way awesome. to give back. Is it, a, is it a mild addiction? Like what is it, what is it that drives you to do so much? It's great to give back. 
that's, I don't want to say excessive, but it's amazingly excessive, you know, in a way that's so good, but are you serving at your highest capacity by doing so much when you only have so much energy? And I feel like I, I'm more productive when I am involved in many different things that I'm doing because I, I call myself the one woman show mm -hmm. because of the amount of hats that I wear. So when I'm mm -hmm. doing all this volunteer work for, for the for example, the um, Canadian Cancer Society, then that's something, and the reason why I do that is very different than why, for example, I volunteer for the TV mm -hmm. station, which is Kojiko TV out in Halton, why mm -hmm. I do that, mm -hmm. or, or why I volunteer for the Halton Industry Education Council. They're all very different, yeah. and they all bring, for me, or some sort of a, a version of satisfaction that's not all the same. Like, I yep. couldn't get it from just one, and it's nice when someone asks you. As a matter of fact, I was sought out mm -hmm. by the Canadian Cancer Society Halton branch to be a, a host for them for many of their events. Nice. And when you're sought out, you, you feel as if, wow, I, yeah, someone sees they this, value they that. value that. Yeah. To say no would be like, no, no, I'm just yeah, way yeah. too above that. I don't think so. So for me, it's, it's an brilliant. honor to be so asked So if you had a, something. let's say, pick one. Not even pick one. Let's say if you had to create one, okay? okay? What would Tamara Lopez's charity be? Or good cause or philanthropic initiative? Hmm, that's a good that question. That you would focus all your energy on. So you put 100% of Tamara into one. What would it be? What's close and dear to your heart? It would have to be advancing females and female rights. So women empowerment. Women empowerment for sure is probably where I put that. And I want to hit them early in high school. And I have yeah. done motivational speaking at high schools. And again, the event I do for the Halton Industry Education Council mm -hmm. is called Women as Career Coaches. Mm -hmm. And I was extremely honored when they asked me to host it. It's an event that has over 700 women there between nice. career-minded women, half, and the other half are high school students, are oh, all cool. females. And People that hosted before me was Jeannie Becker, oh, okay. as well as Pooja Honda. Okay. So when they asked me, I'm thinking, that is absolutely amazing. That's and what can great. I share? And I didn't know I'd have a story to share, and I mm -hmm. did. And I've been asked to, te or to host it several times since then. That's great. Congrats. And the students are like, wow, you were amazing. Can I have your autograph? And I hope to be like you one day, and you've given me more confidence. What a neat just, feeling that is. Again, especially it is. getting it. It's one thing to get it from an adult you know, that mm -hmm. knows you or has seen you, but when a, a young person comes and they wait in line and they want to you know get their selfie or have you sign something I love it when it I is. speak in schools it's the same thing you know it's just that that admiration from a younger person where you know that something you may have said resonated with them in a way that could alter or change or inspire the course of their journey in a positive way right you were just at a college and I saw some of the testimonials yeah. of that too and even the adults when an adult comes up to you and says that was an amazing story thank you for sharing you've given me hope to change my path in life and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, I, you never would think you could touch someone that deeply. When you do, it's something that you want more of. That, I think, is what's addictive. It's the fact that you can, the feeling you get of helping other people intrinsically without wanting anything in return. There's never any money. There's never some sort of like, ooh, look, big prize and accolade at the end. It was just because you want to. It's Appreciation just, versus expectation. Yeah, just being yeah. a good person. What about men? Oh, of course. What about men? Inspiring men, doing stuff for men. As a matter of fact, I volunteer for the men as career coaches. I'll, I'll help them with registration. And of course, it's for everyone to empower everybody. Mm -hmm. It's, I guess, having been raised by a single mother and she taught me to do yeah. everything for myself. And when you become independent, you feel a lot more accomplished as opposed to having to wait for someone to give you something. 100%. So I have this saying that I have on the back of my business card, which I mm -hmm. don't have here, Epic Fail. Behind every <laughs> successful woman is herself. And I've Ooh, used that phrase. That's good. I, I like even have that. a tattooed as well that's because good. I put myself through school, I bought myself my own car, I, yeah. I did all this on my own because I can. And yeah. I want other people to know that they can do the exact same thing. 100%. Don't have to wait. You can do it yourself by working hard, by being dedicated and motivated. That's it. So let's of talk course. about the world of television. Now I know yes. you you know you were working with Halton Region, Kojiko and stuff yep. like that. Let's talk about that a little bit. Sure, there was, uh, so I told you I put like the acting thing on hold. Yeah. And then I just felt, I was in a bit of a rut and I wasn't going anywhere and I'm like, man, I really wish I was on TV again. So I decided to look up on Mandy.com and there was a posting for a host in, mm -hmm. in Milton. I'm like, get out of here, that's where yeah. I live. So yeah. I auditioned and I ended up being on the roster for on-air TV personalities. So nice. I do the Santa Claus parades and cool. then I had my own TV show for a whole year, which was amazing. It was a 30 minute program called TVC Spotlight, and nice. I went around to different community groups or different uh, events that were happening, and I asked the questions like you did yeah. that people wanted to know. So Raising the awareness. Like we were at the Milton Farmer's Market, and we're talking about different farms, and what do you raise, and why is it good to buy locally, for example? Mm -hmm. Or Halton Fire Prevention Week. Mm -hmm. I got to get on a, 
a fire truck, go around and see how you create a fire escape plan, how to make yourself, your home very fire safe, mm -hmm. if that's the word, fireproof, or oh, something like fire. that. But it was a really great opportunity to be out there, and from that is where other opportunities presented itself. Yeah. Like? Like the Halton Industry Education Council. They All saw right. me, I did an episode on them and what they do for the students in the Halton region. Mm -hmm. And they said, wow, is this your full-time job? I was like, if you can believe I just volunteer, I mm -hmm. work full-time somewhere else. I'm like, wow, would you want to share your story? And by then I was in like my early, early 30s. So I'm like, I have nothing to say, or so I thought. Yeah. And they gave me a seven minute segment at their event one day. And from there, then they've asked me to be the host full-time oh, for that's them. that's amazing. That's amazing. So things just, they kind of snowball. So you get the exposure by doing one thing yeah. and then talking about the power of yes, for example. Mm -hmm. When I was talking about branding yourself in my TEDx talk, yeah. I mentioned that the power of yes is very big. So when someone asks you to do something and if you can make it somehow work, the answer is yes, for sure, I'd love to do that for you. Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah. And from the yes becomes something else, you never know it where is. it will lead it's you. It's the ripple effect. It is, it's people funny. have written books about that. working on a, on a side project called Youth Empowering Sustainability. Okay. Yes. Ah, yeah, I yeah. like that acronym. Yes. Youth Empowering Sustainability, you know, and it's just, it's such a, a big, important word in this day and age, you know, it is. unless we're doing things that are sustainable, what's really the point? Exactly. Right? So. So I'll be looking forward to seeing some of those postings on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> exciting stuff. You know, lots of projects, you know, especially like you, you know, I'm busy being busy being busy. So now is to really take back. And that's why I asked you if there was one, you know, what would you focus on? I'm focusing on the Reviver Rejuvenation Ranch for at-risk teens. Yes. So it's 14 to 17 year old teens both boys and girls. Uh, we're starting with the boys, but one of the things I wanted to ask you is once we have the girl ranch open, if you would entertain coming for a visit. I definitely will, oh captain, my captain. Yes, thank yes. you, thank you, thank you. I would love to, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, you know, the, a lot of these girls, they've lost their way. They're like 14 to 17 for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you know, not having the right role models in life, getting involved with crime, getting involved with drugs, you know, for whatever reason, making the excuses you know, and just going down the wrong path. So to have powerful, inspiring women such as yourself come out would be a total honor. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to, let me know for definitely. If you were to happen. have maybe two, three nuggets of wisdom to share with some of the younger girls out here watching you today, what would you share? Do not limit yourself. You are the only one that sets limits. And again, the sky is the limit for you. So if there's something you see that you want, then go after it. All you have to do is make sure you want to work hard and you're dedicated to what you want and you will achieve your dreams. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Tamara Lopez, thank, thank you, you so, James. so much for coming on the show. Oh no, thank I'm you sure for having we'll, me. You know, share we similar again. circles, share the stage one day. I think you and I, I should co-host an event sometime. That'd I think be that awesome would be For Mississauga. Yes, Ooh, now we're talking. Let's for sure. Have that I'll bring tea. my rock star trophy and we'll have like matchy matchy. That's it, dual sure. rock stars. Exactly. Okay. This is the Dynamo <laughs> Show. I am James Erd. I'm here with Tamara. We will see you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in.